breaking news on this Thursday night. The PGA Tour reversing course and announcing the cancellation of the players. We're obviously incredibly disappointed to suspend the PGA Tour season. What have the last 48 hours been like for you? They've been really hard. It's been really hard. Today's overreaction could look like tomorrow's underreaction, so we just got to take it day by day and see where this thing goes. Have announced that the 2020 Open has been cancelled. Last time one of the majors was cancelled. You have to go all the way back to 1945. World War II. The PGA Championship, US Open, the Masters Tournament, all played August or later. PGA now. Tour announcing the cancellation of four additional. The PGA Tour obviously impacted in a big way. They haven't played in a month, and now three more events have been cancelled or postponed. The longest imposed continuous break on the PGA Tour since World War II will end on Thursday morning at Colonial Country Club, which hosted a PGA Tour event for the first time the year after the Second World War ended. Number one in the world headlines, the strongest field in Colonial history. It's officially a tournament week on the PGA Tour. Golf Central, brought to you by TaylorMade. Good evening and welcome to Golf Central. And on behalf of all of us here at Golf Channel, I want to express how grateful and thrilled we are to be back in our home, Studio A, at our world headquarters here in Orlando, Florida. Now, the last several months for the PGA Tour have been a series of announcements, the introduction of new procedures, and scheduling changes. And when you look at this timeline for the PGA Tour over the last several months, it looks like this. March 12th, the PGA Tour cancels the remainder of the Players' Championship and the postponement of the events through April. Then March 17th cancels and postpones the events through May 10th. And then beyond that, we know that we're going to get the Charles Schwab Challenge with no fans allowed starting what would be the first four events back on the PGA Tour. And then it also announced that the PGA Tour was going to hold an additional event at Mirfield Village, which will replace the canceled John Deere Classic from July 9th to the 12th. And joining us now is the commissioner of the PGA Tour, Jay Monahan. Jay, it's good to see you. Uh, I've got to start with this. This week at Colonial Country Club, the date and the venue, when did it start to come into focus for you and your team? Well, you know, Gary, we uh, once we left the Players' Championship and we had canceled a number of events, you know, we went to work very quickly to work with the major championships, the LPGA, the European Tour, to try and work together in the interests of the game. Uh, beginning of April, I believe April 6th, came out and uh, set the schedule for the major championships through the end of the year. And then between April 6th and April 19th, uh, we we finalized what was our schedule at the time, beginning June 8th to 14th here, the week of the Charles Schwab Challenge. So there was a lot of work that was done right from the outset. But I can tell you that so many tournaments raised their hand. So many host organizations raised their hand. They wanted to be on the schedule. Uh, but for Charles Schwab and for Colonial Country Club, they wanted to be first. And uh, so it's it's really nice to be here and early in the week of the Charles Schwab Challenge as we resume play on the PGA Tour and go on a great run here through the FedEx Cup playoffs and the end of the year. Jay, as far as the state and local authorities and, and the governments, were they on board in terms of the communication and the dialogue from the very beginning? Gary, they've been on board. You know, the way I would answer that is, is you look at every tournament that's on our schedule across our tours, uh, and we've had to work very closely with local state officials, uh, with local health officials as we finalize our testing and our health and safety protocols. Uh, and we, you know, keep in mind for each one of these markets, we're an invited guest. We're partners, but we're an invited guest. And as we return, we wanted to make certain that we were uh, we were going to be fully embraced uh, by the community. And we were doing so in a manner that they would be not only comfortable with, but proud of. And uh, that's exactly where I feel we stand right now as you look at the schedule ahead of us. You know, Jay, confidence, it's usually rooted in preparedness which I know you and the team are, but all this is so fluid. How can you gauge 
your team's confidence at the home office and on site with respect to this week? Yeah, you know, it's um, you're right. It's a, it is a fluid situation, but confidence. Um, we are prepared, and keep in mind that our expertise is in running professional, the best professional golf tournaments in markets throughout the world, and we do that on numerous occasions every single week. Um, when you start, when you fold in the challenges that the pandemic and COVID created, we needed to rely on medical experts. We needed to rely on those same partners that we have in each community where we play. And so our confidence really comes off of the fact that the plan that our team has developed in partnership with our players and those constituents uh, is one that, that everyone feels very good about. But to your point on confidence, confidence, full confidence generally comes from the, from a standpoint when you can completely eliminate any risk. Uh, and this is a situation with COVID where nobody can. Um, but what you can do is you can focus on the mitigation elements. And that's where I feel myself, our team, and, and everyone feels really good about where we are. And Jay, with all that being said, why did you choose the particular testing system and the protocols that you have in place? Well, again, I want to be really clear that I didn't choose it. And again, we, as I said during the week of the Players' Championship, and I said in the days that followed, health and safety was going to be health and safety of our players and our partners was our number one priority as we explored the possibilities of returning to play. And so, you know, as, as we, as we look here today, ultimately that plan that we've come up with, we've done in concert with our medical advisor, Tom Hospital, with epidemiologists, with experts in infectious diseases, with support of the, the federal government coronavirus task force, with the work and support of local uh, and state authorities to understand where things stood with the pandemic at that time and what the projection rates were. And then you step back and say, okay, so what is, what is the right testing protocol? And then what is the right safety protocol? And on the testing side, it was, it was important to us, or it was deemed important that we test our players before they were to travel to a venue, which we've done with a PCR naval swab test. Then upon arrival, we test and we, we, we test. And for us, it was important to be able to do so in a relatively expedited manner, which is why the partnership we have with Sanford Health is so important. We're turning around tests over the weekend and today and sometimes two hours. And that allows players to be able to prepare to compete this week. And then particularly early on, when you're thinking about what needed to accomplish and where we as a country and where we were globally with testing, we wanted to make certain that we did so in a way that didn't take away from critical needs in the communities where we're playing, which is why Sanford plays a big role and our ability to purchase all the testing supplies, all the resources and all the personnel to implement our testing uh, was so important. So that's what's happening here. And then once players are tested each day, you go to a layered approach where We've got thermal screening. Every player is going to be prompted questions relative to COVID with a health questionnaire. Um, and then as we get into next week and those players who are considering play or are playing at the RBC Heritage, any player that's going to get on our charter player or caddy uh, will be tested and you'd have to test negative in order to get on that plane. So it's been, you have to look at the testing and then you have to look at what can you do on site over the course of the week. And, um, you guys have covered it so exceedingly well over the last 90 days, but our sport's unique. It lends itself naturally to social distancing. Uh, we've thought about all the movements, players, caddies, and everybody that's going to be in our small bubble. We think that we can significantly mitigate any risk on that side. We've got all the sanitization measures you could have in place. Uh, we're going to keep not only on a golf course, but when you think about uh, the hotel and other movements over the course of the week, keep players separated. And then obviously coming back with four, four weeks of no spectators allows us, we think, to be in a, in a place where we should feel confident about our ability to, to, you know, to get underway and do so in a safe and responsible way. Jay, do you think that the outdoor environment, and as you mentioned, the natural uh, distance between competitors that, that are competing on their own, uh, and obviously there is no physical contact, that that's allowed you to be a leader in returning uh, to competition? Well, I think, 
Yeah, I, I do. I, I, I think that we're, again, I think that's the uniqueness of our sport. And we're excited to celebrate it on the stage that we're going to be celebrating it on through here, from here to the end of the year. But, you know, when you're, when you're talking about a couple hundred acres, a thousand people, groups going off every 10 minutes, groups being 300 yards from each other. Um, and, you know, with, with an awareness now relative to proximity that has never existed before, but with a group of players, caddies and constituents that really want to do the right thing, we, for those reasons, we as a sport, we're in a better position to return, just like we as a sport uh, on the participation side with 50 states open and 95 plus, plus percent of golf courses uh, accessible right now are in a place that's, uh, I think, advantageous as play as people try and get back to, you know, restore their mental health, their well-being, their their own act activities. I think golf is in a really unique position to, you know, to move forward and grow. Jay, outside of your own organization, who has provided you with some very valuable counsel during this period? Well, Gary, I think before I go outside the organization, I'd like to just spend a moment on the inside or the inner workings and recognize our policy board. We've got four players who serve as player directors and uh, James Hahn, Johnson Wagner, Kevin Kisner, and Jordan Spieth. And you've got Charlie Hoffman, who serves as the chair of our player advisory council. And since we left the players championship, we've had nine uh, Microsoft Teams policy board calls and four player advisory council calls and get 16 members of that pack. That group has given us dozens of hours as we've thought through the schedule, eligibility, and ultimately our, our safety and testing protocols. So they deserve a ton of credit. And then when you go outside, you know, we've talked about the partners that we have in the industry. We've come together in the interest of the game. Uh, I think we've all been helpful to each other. Uh, as we've worked uh, towards what we think is a really strong global golf schedule through the through the end of the year. And then, as you can imagine, talking to our title sponsors and leadership uh, leadership at our title sponsors, to our tournament organizations who really understands what's happening on the ground in every market uh, where we play, to medical experts, to government officials, the mayors, governors, uh, and in every single market where where we're going to play. Uh, so many of those people, and then you rely heavily on the people that you've always relied upon, particularly when things are challenging. And I've got a great group of people who I call friends and mentors and have relied heavily on them and uh, relied heavily on my family away from work. You know, we look at all these dates for all the other tours, the global tours that, that play golf, men's and women's tours around the world. Their resumption dates are all different for you. We know it's this week, but I want to go back to where it stopped, and that was at your Super Bowl, your flagship event. Did you explore a way to try to play the Players' Championship at some point before the end of this year? Well, when we, when we announced that we were stepping away, uh, and we're together that Friday morning, we said that we were canceling the event. Um, and I would say in the weeks, the week, that following week, we were really stepping back and trying to take stock of, of where we were and how we would proceed with uh, building a plan that gets us back to playing. And I think you put everything on the table, Gary, at that point in time. And, and, and that includes, we put the players championship back on the table. Um, and we also, in doing so, we wanted to make sure that we were talking to all the organizations in our industry. I referenced that earlier. We had calls, frequent calls over the course of those first two to three weeks where we thought it was really important for each of us to understand where we were, how we were looking at our challenges and, you know, what some of the, the, the problems or issues we were facing is that would give us an opportunity as a sport to you know, to, to put the best schedule back in, in front uh, of our fans and, and, and importantly for our players and allow our players uh, to succeed. So, yes, it was it was a consideration. But when you look back and you look at the resumption that you of, of tours that you just showed, you look at the global golf calendar between now uh, and the end of the year. And when you think about the events that we have through the FedEx Cup playoff, um, including the, the PGA Championship preceding it, coming out of the FedEx Cup playoffs into a U.S. Open and ultimately, you know, moving down, uh, moving down the road into uh, into the Masters tournament. 
um, you know, we felt like, you know, we felt like we were, we weren't in a position based on our schedule to be able to return. And obviously with returning in March, that also puts, uh, you know, a different level of pressure, having two events that quick back to back, particularly given the fact that we started it and had to walk away. Jay, before we let you go, we, we know that this break was precipitated by the outbreak of a global pandemic. But in that time, we've also seen a global social and civic movement that you've become vocal about over this past week. What more can the PGA Tour do when it comes to this? Well, I, I think um, I think the answer to that goes back to what I've tried to communicate, which is we need to we need to engage. Uh, you've heard that that expression used a lot here over the last you know ten days, and you have to have a commitment to it. And so I think it starts with that, and we've already started on that front. We have a commitment to diversity and inclusion as an organization. It dates back several years. So with that commitment. Uh, which is stated to our our employees, uh, an ever increasingly diverse group of employees, to our players, to our partners, to our fans. Uh, it's incumbent on us to make sure that we 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 make ourselves part of the solution. We use the platform of the PGA Tour to make ourselves part of the solution. So um, we are we are gonna we are active on that front, and I think it's important, Gary, that you know when you look at this organization, and you think about what happens every single week. Um, I mentioned earlier that we're partners with our host organizations, and we're invited guests in every community. And if you raise $200 million for charity every year through your tournaments, our players' tournaments uh, and those two exceptional exhibition matches raised over $35 million since we've been away, we have an opportunity with this platform to make a real difference. And so I think working closely with each tournament in partnership and understanding what we can do in the interest of the tour and the interest of our game uh, to make a difference as it relates to racial injustice uh, is something that, that I'm inspired by. And, and I think, uh, I'm, I, I, like I said, when we left the Players' Championship, we expect to be held accountable for how we're going to respond and how we're going to support um, communities that have been affected by COVID you know, hold us accountable on this front because we are going to we are going to we're going to really engage and make sure we make a difference. Well, Jay, back to this week, we, we wish you, uh, the staff, everybody there at Colonial Country Club, the best of luck and look forward to talking with you real soon. Thank you. Thank you, Gary.